the trucking industry in America is struggling big time. According to some of the latest data around trucking, freight, and logistic rates, we are undoubtedly currently in a recession in the trucking industry. Whether it be short-haul day-to-day trips or long-haul trucking across states, truck drivers are running out of cash, businesses are losing money, and people are being laid off left, right, and center. And no, folks, this is not a headline out of the 2020 pandemic. This is happening today in 2023. And particularly, this is having a big effect on the clean energy movement around the trucking industry, which we all know is going to be critical as states like New Jersey and California have announced the banning of diesel trucks by 2040. Whether it be Nikola Motors, Freightliner, BYD, Peterbilt, or even Tesla, electric semi trucks are not selling. And both investors, customers, drivers, and dealers have one thing to blame for the slowdown. And so in this video, I want to address exactly that. We're going to look into exactly what is happening in the freight industry right now, what it means for the driver shortages and the labor market, as well as understanding how the electric semi-truck picture fits right in and why sales have been slumping so much, even though innovation and production in the U.S. is skyrocketing for electric vehicles. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let's understand how we got here. Now, obviously, the trucking industry has been like this since the start of the pandemic. In 2019, right before COVID-19 hit the world, we already saw a very tight labor market for trucks. People were investing like crazy new businesses, and truckers were making a lot of money as the demand for freight increased. Ocean trade within China and America skyrocketed as the technological age developed and the demand for consumer electronics increased. And then in 2020, when the pandemic hit, people realized that all of a sudden there is a lack of supply of equipment and prices skyrocketed. As soon as economy started to open on a slow by slow basis in 2021, trucking demand increased like crazy. That led to more people going into the space, more drivers being hired, more companies being built in logistics. And that resulted in what we are now facing in an oversupply of drivers and too many trucks on the road. And as simple microeconomics will tell you, when you have an oversupply, prices will automatically come down. And in the trucking and freight space, prices have everything to do with logistic rates. And well, as you can see, folks, according to the Freight Waves National Truck Load Index, we are at an all time low for the past three years in freight logistics. This means that companies have lower profit margins when they're running a truck on a day to day basis, as businesses are fighting over loads at ports and at depots. This is the exact opposite image of what we had happen in the start of 2021, which obviously led to the inflation spike that we are dealing with today. And although by looking at the headline CPI inflation number in the US, you can't tell we are in a recession, the trucking index and the tender rejections index in the US is clearly showing a different story. This is an all time low folks, which means that supply is far exceeding demand. The Fed has raised interest rates so much that there is an 8 to 10 month lag between the performance of the tender rejection index and what the actual economy is doing, meaning this supply chain metric is going to bottom well after the actual economy does and also top out well before the economy does. And well, ironically enough, this explains exactly why electric trucks have not sold as much as they possibly could have in a normal environment. As somebody who follows Nikola Motors very closely, launching the battery electric tray in 2022, it's become pretty evident that the electrification revolution is being held back by macroeconomics. The value proposition that a battery or hydrogen fuel cell provides is immense. 
And although the cost is high, nothing in America is limited by cost. We have the largest population of millionaires and billionaires on planet Earth. And if people can buy a $1,200 iPhone, a $60,000 Tesla, they can buy a $200,000 electric semi-truck. And with the Inflation Reduction Act and insane incentives from states like New York, New Jersey, and California with their voucher programs, there is very little hurdles most businesses are going to have to purchase electric trucks. Instead, it's becoming very obvious that the actual problem has to do with demand for electric trucks in a time when demand for regular diesel and natural gas trucks is already at an all-time low. And as seen by how the Tesla Semi launch played out in December of last year, it's pretty obvious that most of the businesses that are even investing in electric semi trucks are big companies. These are not your small businesses and mom and pop logistics companies. These are corporations that have set sustainability targets that are trying to do a marketing stunt by partnering with some of the latest EV companies. As a matter of fact, this is such a big marketing stunt that Tesla does not even report the revenue they generated from the Tesla Semi in the line item of their income statement in their first quarter earnings results. This, as a matter of fact, is most likely being done because sales are very much in the gutter, as is with the case for other startups like Nikola Motors, Hyzon, Hylion, or even Freightliner, and Peterbilt. And what this unfortunately means is that the electric semi truck revolution is going to be rather slow going into 2023 and 2024 simply because of basic economics. Most analysts from firms like Union Pacific and JB Hunt noted that dry van spot rates declined by 0.6% in May from April, and that the May rates are down around 24% from the same month last year. This is a very obvious sign that the capacity of exiting the market is increasing faster than the capacity of players entering the market. This means that smaller carriers are just going to be naturally less profitable under growing pressure. And right now that is resulting in a wider spread between spot and contract rates. And well, because this freight recession, as many people call it, is coinciding with a broader economic downturn, chances are this is going to last a little bit longer than many economists have expected. And analysts right now in the trucking space expect this downturn to last around another 12 to 18 months. Whether this means more trouble ahead for electrification players like Nikola Motors and Tesla, I'll let you decide that for yourself. But it's pretty clear that although electric trucks are a good solution, they are not entering the market at mass scale quite at the right time. And although many people would consider this as an opportunity to get out of this industry, chances are this is going to be a repeat of 2008 with something like social media and consumer electronics. We all know what happened when the iPhone launched in 2007, we were right in the midst of a massive global financial crisis. And it was not until 2009 and 2010 that the economy got a hold of itself and demand for the product started to skyrocket. Chances are that could be a very similar scenario here with the hydrogen and electric trucking revolution. It's just that we'd have to be a little bit more patient. As usual, folks, thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.